we are presenting Navident. The, the, this slide uh, shows uh, uh, the uh, application, the clinical application of Navident, and uh, the claim of the slide is uh, take control from study computer guided pathology to dynamic navigation. Why taking control? Taking control because of uh, uh, instead of uh, using a, a static uh, template, in, uh, uh, in this case you do uh, have uh, a direct control of uh, the uh, clinical procedure. Once you have received uh, a static template and uh, you place the template on a, on a dental base, a patient, you really don't know what is going uh, to occur underneath the template because uh, you trusted uh, the supplier, you trusted uh, uh, your plan and the manufacturing of the template. Uh, but uh, uh, that trust uh, lies on uh, the relationship that you have established, established with, uh, with the supplier. In this case, uh, you do have uh, a chance without working with a static template the, to see and understand with your eyes what is uh, occurring uh, on uh, uh, the patient anatomy. So that's that's the reason why we're talking about uh, uh, taking control. So what we are uh, developing in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, presentation is a few items which we would like to uh, address, and uh, the items of the agenda are uh, the, the study of computer guided pathology history. The paradox, which is linked uh, to study computer guided pathology, we would like, uh, based on the paradox, to introduce uh, Claro now, the Canadian company, which is uh, uh, behind uh, uh, Navident. We will present Navident itself, and also the new church side workflow, which is uh, going to be applied uh, into the dental office. Let's start with uh, a little bit of history here and present you with uh, Dr. Scott Gantz. Dr. Scott Gantz was uh, first and foremost a, a, pros a, a prosthodontist, and, uh, and therefore um, uh, what he had uh, in, in mind, he, uh, starting from 2006, was uh, a prosthetic-driven surgery. He uh, had uh, uh, an insight, and the insight was that uh, uh, patients get to the office uh, primarily for teeth, not for implants. This aesthetic and functional outcome, it's what the, uh, the patient expects uh, to get out of uh, uh, the treatment. And therefore, um, the uh, practitioner needs to deliver, and, uh, uh, deliver a, an end result which is up to his or her expectations. How you can achieve this uh, result, this prosthetic result, which is uh, aesthetically and functionally, uh, you know, uh, uh, perfect. You can achieve it uh, through a process of reverse engineering, and we can see the picture on the right, where you, you actually have a, a, a CAD software where uh, the um, surgeon plan the teeth, the position of the teeth, and, uh, uh, and in fact, uh, in this case, there is also a graft planned uh, uh, under a, a teeth, and uh, accordingly, the implants are positioned and placed. So, uh, the whole process uh, starts from uh, planning first the teeth, and then uh, uh, in, uh, in a very congruent uh, uh, you know, uh, mode, uh, placing uh, the implants uh, uh, virtually on the software. Once the, um, the planning has been uh, approved and, and, and has finished, of course there is opportunity using a still a, a CAD software to plan a template, a, a surgical guide, a static guide, which can force the implants into a position which is a congruent to the prosthesis that would be then uh, skewed in, uh, in, the, in the patient's mouth. So that process of reverse engineering was very much at the heart of static computer guide, uh, computer guide and pathology. And the benefit of, uh, of that, we can see here the uh, template which is, uh, uh, has been placed on uh, a total edential patient and uh, skewed in with the three screws. Um, the uh, template, it's, it's uh, uh, in this fashion used with uh, uh, some substantial added benefits. One 
or and, uh, and of the most important it's to preempt any prosthetic error you can see here in these pictures that uh, the implant has been placed uh, possibly in the volume in the bone volume but uh, in, a, in, a, in a manner which is not congruent uh, with the aesthetic line of the patient that error which is, uh, uh, comes quite logically from uh, splitting uh, the two events implant placement uh, and prosthetic uh, you know um, uh, definition and, and plan can be um, overcome uh, through uh, you know materials which end, uh, end up uh, adding cost to the treatment and also uh, having uh, some aesthetic challenges which are not necessarily accepted uh, by the patient. So the added value of uh, a static uh, uh, guide uh, in, the, in, the, in the static guided implant uh, procedures is also linked to the fact that uh, once, you, once you plan more than one implant, you do have a chance to plan them and, uh, and place them uh, quite in a parallel fashion one with the other and that's uh, not only uh, in terms of uh, uh, taking them away uh, from uh, the nerve from the mandibular nerve but also creating a, a, a parallelism among the implants which will benefit uh, the prosthetic result the other advantage uh, is the openness uh, to mine invasive uh, protocols uh, such as uh, this one the flapless surgery which of course adds a benefit to the patient in terms of uh, 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 you know uh, less mobility uh, and, uh, and a faster um, uh, speed up uh, um, healing as opposed of uh, the classic uh, uh, surgical approach which is uh, raising a flap and, uh, and therefore creating a uh, more stress on, on the patient but you know there is a paradox uh, with uh, with all that, and the paradox uh, uh, has been uh, uh, quite effectively presented by Dr. Tadier at the Kai Academy last November 2015 uh, in uh, in Florence. Kai Academy, which has been uh, held uh, under the aegis uh, of uh, Dr. Marco Rinaldi, uh, the actual president of Kai Academy, and uh, what uh, Dr. Tadier pointed out pointed out is that only one percent of implantologists make constant use of a static computer guided pathology regardless sheer clinical and scientific evidence that's quite uh, 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 quite uh, uh, impressive i mean uh, it comes uh, it gets a lot why uh, you know such a, a small portion of implantologists are using uh, uh, templates uh, regardless of the fact that uh, we have uh, highlighted the uh, the clinical advantages, but not only uh, the uh, solid uh, clinical advantages, but there's also scientific evidence, you know, um, projecting uh, data, which uh, uh, of course back up the usage of uh, this uh, template vis-a-vis uh, -vis the freehand uh, surgery. So we were intrigued by uh, understanding why, and we carried out uh, a survey which uh, uh, will, which included uh, a certain number of surgeons uh, all over the world. So it was, an, it was an international survey which was trying to figure out why such a, a small portion of implantologists are using a, a guided surgery, a static guided surgery. And then we got uh, a few bullet points here which are summarizing the reason why. First and foremost, the guide cost. If you do have uh, a one implant, uh, and then you do have a cost of, of the implant, the cost of the prosthesis, uh, and then you add up uh, a cost of a guide, then that accrues up in, uh, uh, into a bigger number, which is uh, uh, under these circumstances, under this cyclicality, uh, economic cyclicality, that creates some uh, problems uh, in communication uh, with, uh, with patients. There's also a guide delivery time ta issue. Uh, the guide uh, is manufactured either centrally uh, from the company or locally from a lab, but uh, uh, using a 3D printing machines. But still, there is a, a planning time, there's manufacturing time, there's delivering time. So all adds up uh, in uh, in a lead time, which uh, most often it's uh, between the one to even uh, three weeks, uh, which is, uh, comes at odds with uh, the time. Uh, uh, constraints uh, that uh, surgeons and patients face in uh, getting uh, quickly through the, 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 the treatment and, and eventually you know uh, getting rid of, uh, of, of the problem 
while uh, uh, using a, a guide sometimes uh, needs to adjust uh, you know the professional agenda uh, to uh, the, the workflow linked to the delivery and the manufacturing of a guide then there's an adjunct surgical kit which adds up uh, on cost not only in terms of cost because there's a there's a specific uh, surgical kit which is needs to be used depending on the morphology of the implant and therefore all uh, instruments have to be adjusted uh, to the specific brand. So there is not only the cost uh, uh, which is accrued, you know, the total uh, cost for the treatment, but also the learning curve because it's not just a, a, a surgical kit uh, that needs to be learned by the, the, the surgeon, but also needs to be learned and handled through the assistants and therefore um, that creates uh, uh, a little bit of a, of, of, of a hurdle in, uh, in trying to accommodate uh, the surgical kit on uh, the new treatment, on the new guide treatment. Then uh, the question uh, which is really affecting uh, everybody, we mentioned that uh, uh, referring to the patients, but also it's evident, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's applicable uh, uh, to, to, to the practitioners, is that everybody is constrained in terms of time and therefore everybody wants to uh, squeeze and, and, and deliver uh, the end result in a, in a shortened uh, uh, time frame. So that were the, uh, the reason why, uh, you know, uh, most of the implantologists do not make a, a, a constant use of a static guide. The good news here is that you, we're using a, a Navident, using dynamic navigation uh, concept, not only you do have the benefit uh, of a prosthetic driven surgery, which are the core, uh, you know, uh, concept uh, which developed uh, guided surgery altogether, but it, it also address, can address, you know, some of the drawbacks which are linked uh, uh, to a static guide and which have been uh, put in evidence through uh, this international survey. So that's now we want to introduce, uh, having said that, we want to introduce Claronav, which is a uh, the Canadian company which was founded uh, in 2001 as a Claron Technology by two entrepreneurs, Claudio Gatti in Italian and uh, Endron Deckel. Both of them are uh, graduated uh, in uh, computer science at a very prestigious university and they, um, uh, in uh, 2015, they sold uh, a portion, a business unit uh, to Lexmark which is a, a fairly important uh, American company, having a, a the far side approach uh, to uh, um, uh, invest uh, the, um, the money uh, packaged uh, out of a, of a cell into uh, the concept of uh, dynamic navigation and therefore Claronav is now totally focused on dynamic navigation, has uh, the means to develop uh, thoroughly uh, this concept. The brands uh, are uh, basically three. We do have uh, Navident, and the word dent, uh, as I'm suggesting, uh, is very much geared to dentistry. Then we do have Navient, uh, e, ears, and for nose, e for throat, which is more um, on, uh, on hospital business. But the two products, uh, they do share a common thread, which is a micron tracker, which is a technology uh, behind the both Navident and Navient. The Micron Tracker, you can see a picture of it, it's uh, apparently nothing more than uh, two cameras and you can see the two cameras on top of the card on, on the right, there are two eyes looking in front. And uh, these two eyes, uh, which are, end up being uh, uh, and following a uh, technology which is a uh, uh, fairly renowned, uh, the stereoscopy, uh, technology and you see uh, on the left uh, a, a, a viewer, a stereoscopic viewer which is one of the first 3D viewer which appeared uh, at the beginning of uh, last century, follows uh, a an, an approach, technological approach which not only can uh, uh, create uh, and position a marker in the space but because of their two eyes can create an angle and uh, through the angle can create uh, a 3D image. And uh, 
the uh, marker that uh, they detect, each individual I detect, uh, we can uh, easily see on, uh, on the picture on the right, because there are checkerboards on uh, two tags. One is uh, called uh, Joe tag, because we will see it's going to be placed um, extra orally. And the other one is uh, a drill tag, because uh, it's going to be adapted uh, to a handpiece. But both of these detectors uh, have uh, checkerboards, black and white, which can be detected uh, by each individual eye. And then uh, through uh, the fact that uh, they both are, uh, you know, capturing uh, uh, images, they can create an angle uh, of, uh, of each individual marker and through that angle create a 3D video, which ultimately is going to be superimposed to a 3D uh, 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 package of images which is coming from uh, the comb beam. So that's, that's in a nutshell, is the technology that the Micron Tracker, Micron Tracker has put together. If, and that, I would like to uh, present this analogy, um, just uh, to make a parallel, which will be useful uh, later on. And, uh, and not everybody knows that uh, when we talk about personal computers and, and mouse, uh, everybody, you know, uh, things of Apple Macintosh, uh, Steve Jobs, but in fact, the uh, PC, mouse, and uh, uh, you know, operating system concept using uh, tiles was in fact uh, invented uh, at Xerox in 1981. So now nobody knows and nobody remembers that uh, uh, you know, Xerox really invented uh, the personal computer. That that invention uh, uh, went through the IBM personal computer in 1983 and just you know one year later you know Steve Jobs presented to the world the Apple Macintosh but now everybody you know remember uh, you know Apple IBM itself sold uh, his own uh, division uh, personal computer division to Lenovo so but but in fact the technology um, was invented uh, in 1981 by Xerox why I'm presenting uh, this analogy because uh, Equally, when we talk about dynamic navigation, we are talking about uh, a different brand, which is a Robodent, which was, uh, in, a, in, in essence, presented and touted in 2001. That technology, uh, at that time, uh, was uh, a technology which uh, had uh, some cost implication, which cost uh, you know, 100,000 euros. Um, um, exploited uh, a technology of uh, uh, infrared uh, wavelengths which were, you know, hitting uh, uh, markers, quartz, uh, which were reflecting uh, uh, the wavelength back to the sensors. But that technology had uh, some drawbacks, not only uh, because of uh, the pricing uh, tag, which was, uh, in a sense, not positioned to be easily invested uh, at uh, the office level, but also the technology had uh, a level of uh, uh, consistency um, and, and steadiness uh, which was a little shaky because of uh, uh, the coarse concept uh, and the infrared light. But in fact, uh, in essence, these were the first uh, uh, you know, concepts and the first product uh, which has been touted and presented uh, in the market, uh, you know, with uh, um, the dental market uh, with uh, uh, the, um, uh, the dynamic surgery. If we want to make uh, uh, a parallel to a technology which is uh, an everyday technology in every day in everybody's hands, we will definitely point to a GPS technology because uh, equally to a satellite which is, uh, as we know, capture some uh, markers which is a longitude and a latitude and then uh, project uh, the information to a screen, which is uh, most of the time is our smartphone, equally to that approach, it's uh, followed by Navident, because Navident, uh, as we've seen, uh, captured uh, the uh, images uh, using uh, the uh, stereoscopic uh, approach, and then project those information using uh, the screen of a laptop. And uh, specifically, we do see on the left also a crosshair, which is also summarize some uh, key information for the surgeon, for the users. You see on top of left, you got three numbers, 0.1 millimeter, which is to suggest the distance uh, between uh, the top of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the tip uh, of the pair, vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the axis of, uh, of the planned implant. There's also 
uh, an angle, 0.2 degrees, again, uh, the angle of the burr of the drill uh, as vis-à-vis -vis the, the plant implant. And also, there's a numerical number, black numerical number, which is 10.8 millimeters, which suggests the distance uh, from uh, the uh, plant uh, implant apex. This information are quite useful and essential for the surgeon in order to organize his uh, uh, surgeries, dynamic surgery, and uh, uh, get uh, to drill and uh, eventually to place an implant exactly in the position which has been planned um, using, uh, using an avident. And, uh, and these six quadrants are indeed uh, the quadrants that the surgeon uh, can visualize while uh, uh, using a uh, dynamic uh, surgery. The first quadrant uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, the visualization of uh, the two cameras. There's a video which has been captured by Navident and it's, we can uh, think of uh, Navident also as a black box because I can uh, record not only the surgery but also the planning uh, of the case and uh, eventually the surgeon can tap into uh, that information whenever he wants uh, or he needs that information also for legal uh, you know, uh, reasons or so for eventually uh, providing uh, providing the evidence of, uh, of the activity he has put together. The second quadrant is what we call the Panorex, where we do have uh, the, the full uh, set of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the oral condition or patient condition, where we can see also the implant and uh, we see uh, on, uh, on the implant, uh, on, the, on the contour, a green contour, the uh, image of, of the drill. The third quadrant is the crosshair with the three pieces of information. We see a, qu a fourth quadrant, which is in fact a, a vector, a green vector, which is suggesting uh, with 8.1, not how deep the drill has cut on the bone, but 8.1 is the distance between uh, the top of the tip um, and, and the apex of the planned uh, implant. The fifth and the sixth quadrant with the coronal and sagittal information. So these are the six quadrant which are uh, basically uh, projected by the laptop. The uh, crosshair we said it's a, it's a quite uh, a meaningful uh, uh, information. Um, we do have, uh, uh, we see the three pieces of information but we see also some uh, um, uh, pictorial on the crosshair itself. We do have A on top, P on the bottom, R on the right. A stands for anterior, P for posterior, right for right, and on the other side we do have left. Then we do see a cross, a green cross, and we see a cone with a circle. The green cross uh, is suggesting uh, the drill's tip position, and uh, whenever it's between 0 and 0 0.5, the cross is red. If it exceeds the threshold of 0 0.5 and it's below one millimeter it gets yellow if it exceeds 1.0 millimeter it gets uh, to into red and then if you do see the cone you see a circle in the cone you see that angle it's 12.4 degrees and it's anterior so that suggests the correction which can be uh, you know um, uh, exerted uh, on, 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 on the, uh, through the handpiece, which is uh, twisting uh, the handpiece from anterior position into a posterior position and moving uh, the drill tip uh, from right to left. So this is uh, uh, an interpretation and a reading of a crosshair which is very effective and also allows uh, the surgeon to make uh, the adjustments which are needed uh, to pinpoint uh, the center. When the, the center is pinpointed, then uh, you know, the osteotomy can, can start. And in fact, we do have a few slides here which shows uh, uh, the, the, you know, the drill gets uh, uh, nearby uh, the area where the implant has been placed and you see the cross hair uh, and, and the cross, the red cross, and uh, you see there's a cone which is significantly anterior uh, and, and it's 17.1 17 degrees. And therefore, the surgeon starts making the adjustments, which are, you know, uh, getting uh, closer to uh, the center of the crosshair. When we said uh, it's uh, the crosshair is pinpointed, then the uh, drilling can start. And we see the vector on the right, which is getting uh, 
5.8, suggesting there's a 5.8 millimeters uh, away, uh, the tip uh, uh, is 5.8 millimeter away from uh, the top of the tip from, uh, from the apex. And uh, uh, once the, uh, uh, the, the tip, the drill, gets uh, minus uh, one millimeter from uh, the apex, then uh, you do have a vector changing it from green into yellow. And you have also a countdown, which is uh, measured uh, uh, both on the vector and also on uh, the center of the crosshair. When uh, the surgeon gets to the apex, then uh, you get uh, a color, a color code, which is a, a red color, and also a, a signal uh, which uh, uh, alerts the surgeon that uh, the, the bottom of the implant, the plant implant, has been achieved. And that, what we've seen here is the, the treatment uh, of a mandibula. If you look at here, it's the treatment of a maxilla. And you see, for, for example, that uh, on the images where uh, there's uh, the maxilla, you do have uh, an occlusal uh, site of, uh, of the maxilla, which is uh, again, uh, uh, it's a way to facilitate life for surgeons, because surgeons uh, tend to work uh, watching uh, indirectly at uh, the patient. So basically they look at the laptop, they don't look at the patient uh, consistently, and therefore they want to see uh, on the laptop, uh, whatever what is uh, uh, the, the, the portion of the patient which is uh, shown uh, to him. Equally, the panorex, uh, it's a complete reverse from the standard uh, panorex because uh, you do have on the left side, in fact, the left side of the patient, and on the right side, the right side of the patient. This is uh, this inversion is occurring uh, whenever the, pa the, the surgeon starts doing, uh, uh, you know, dynamic surgery. Otherwise, the representation of uh, the uh, radiological representation uh, gets to a, a standard, which is a standard uh, for any uh, radiological representation. But when uh, he, the surgeon gets into dynamic surgery, then uh, uh, the panorex get reversed, and also the pictures of the maxilla or the mandibula get in a way which is uh, quite uh, more congruent uh, with the, uh, the, the activity that the surgeon has to carry out on, on top of the patient. So. What is a Navident? What is the equipment per se? The equipment uh, is uh, com composed by a card. You do have a laptop which is included uh, into, the, into the system. You do have a camera box which has uh, the two stereoscopic cameras plus this uh, LED light which is very powerful. It's a, it's a cool light which can, can project uh, a, a beam of, of light in front of the two cameras. And there's a boom up boom arm which holds the laptop uh, above the patient. The process, uh, as we will see, um, goes uh, through uh, the uh, manufacturing uh, of a Navi stent. A Navi stent has a retainer uh, which gets mold uh, in the patient's mouth and, uh, and, uh, and uh, an arm which is uh, the key element of a Navi stent because uh, this arm holds a fixed plate which has its own geometry, it is also a cylinder which is facing uh, the antagonist uh, you know, arch and, uh, and the, the arm in the fixed plate have a, a key role because uh, 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 on the fixed plate will be uh, fixed the CT marker and therefore the patient will, take, will be scanned using a CT marker fixed on the fixed plate. And in fact, uh, the, the, C, the, 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 the CT marker, uh, you've got, uh, uh, you know, three shapes. You've got two horns, one is a left wing, another one is right wing um, um, uh, CT marker. Uh, and uh, you do have uh, the two wings, uh, because if you want to treat uh, total identical cases, uh, and you, have, you do have uh, two uh, pieces of, uh, of CT markers, because you want to treat uh, uh, a patient on both uh, arches and then you do have a left wing and a right wing because uh, you might be willing to treat a patient on a semi arch either on the left or on the on the right the key element is that this CT marker it's fixed on uh, uh, the fixed plate and there's also a thumbnail which is screwed in and to create a, a solid uh, uh, object which will be uh, placed in the patient's mouth in order to be scanned. So that's that's the position. 
a key uh, information here, a key piece of information is that uh, when we are currently, uh, we actually uh, scanning the patient, we do not need to get into the screw or the arm. The area which is uh, interested uh, uh, to be scanned is the area where the fiducial is placed. And the fiducial are in fact uh, placed on the two wings. Under the two wings, we, 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 there is a, um, um, an, uh, an aluminum uh, um, sole which is a uh, uh, radio peak and has a, a, a jigsaw uh, uh, you know, shape and uh, we do need to get two angles in order to be able uh, to register uh, the, um, the CD marker once the DICOM files uh, get imported to Navident. So the fall not, doesn't need to be uh, stretched up to, to the edge of uh, the CD marker. The element uh, which needs to be included uh, are these uh, one, two millimeters uh, of wings which have the fiducial and, uh, and those uh, two fiducials, in this case two because there are two wings, needs to be captured uh, by, by the scan. So um, once uh, you know the patient has got scanned and, uh, and the surgeon starts doing uh, uh, his own uh, dynamic surgery, then uh, the CT market get uh, you know uh, unscrewed and uh, and substituted with uh, the jaw tag, and the jaw tag has uh, indeed uh, a, a, a geometry, uh, a female geometry, which is uh, exactly the same as the CT marker, and therefore the fixed plate can be fixed on uh, uh, the uh, female, the jaw tag female, and still we can use a thumbnail screw to fix everything together. If you look at the jaw tag, besides the checkerboards that we have, three checkerboards, we also have uh, uh, pegs, two pegs, which are used to uh, drill uh, axis calibration. And, uh, and therefore, one of the two actions which are mandatory before uh, starting a dynamic surgery is a, a drill uh, axis uh, calibration, which is not, not more than uh, putting uh, uh, the engine of the head, contrangle into the pegs and then uh, twisting uh, the contrangle, the handpiece, in order to be calibrated properly by the software. And that's the first calibration. There is a second calibration, which is mandatory, which is a drill tip calibration. And uh, you need to pinpoint the crosshair, one of the two crosshairs, not necessarily two together, but just one or the other. You don't need to pinpoint with your trip, with your drill, and get uh, the drill calibrated. And you need to repeat uh, this calibration for each drill which is used uh, while uh, performing your surgery. So if you're going to use, uh, you know, um, first, and second, and third drill, each individual drill will be calibrated. While uh, the axis, uh, the contrangle axis calibration, it does occur just once. And, uh, and then uh, you do have, uh, you see, you do have uh, two pegs and two crosshairs because uh, uh, depending on, uh, on the surgeon if it's uh, right-handed or left-handed or eventually can uh, uh, decide to use uh, one crosshair for uh, the drills and another crosshair uh, for calibrating uh, the implant. So there are many options but again you need to use it uh, only once uh, for uh, the contrangle and you need to repeat it uh, for each drill that will be used during dynamic surgery. And that's where you know you can uh, see the jaw tag. Uh, you can see the jaw tag uh, and the drill tag uh, uh, calibrated uh, and uh, basically used together. You see, in this case, uh, we are calibrating uh, the drill, and the drill uh, is pinpointing uh, one of the crosshair positioned on uh, uh, positioned on uh, the, the jaw tag. And. Uh, um, and the, the, uh, the drill tag has uh, its own uh, adapter, is clamped to, to, uh, to an end piece through an adapter, which is a universal adapter, and therefore there is no any uh, specific uh, end piece which can be used uh, or has to be used uh, for this procedure, so it can be any end piece. And thanks to an adapter, a universal adapter, we can, we can find a way to clamp on it the, the, drill, the drill tag. So, what is uh, the uh, workflow, no? the dynamic workflow with Navident? So, the first and foremost, you do have uh, four uh, phases. 
You do have uh, the uh, stent manufacturing, what we call the Navi stent, which is a manufacturer at the church site. You do have the scanning of the patient, then the planning of the case, and then the placement of the implants using dynamic surgery. So in terms of uh, stent, uh, the stent, the Navi stent, is uh, a manufactured uh, uh, chair size. You do have uh, thermoplastic material, which is uh, provided by the company. We put the retainer of hot, uh, almost boiling water, and once it uh, gets, um, uh, you know, uh, soft after 10 seconds, you can uh, retrieve the retainer and mold it uh, on patient's mouth. Once it's been molded uh, in patient's mouth, you can fix uh, uh, the arm and, uh, and, uh, and then uh, you can uh, uh, fix the CT marker. Uh, there are two uh, spikes which uh, get uh, into uh, the wings of the arm. And then you do have uh, the thumbnail uh, skew, which is uh, used again to make uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, create a solid object uh, altogether. Once the object, uh, the now stand object, uh, has been uh, finalized, we do have uh, the, the opportunity to scan the patient. So patient uh, gets, uh, you know, you see the picture on the top on the left. He gets uh, to wear uh, the Navi stand. And uh, using uh, cotton rolls, you see two cotton rolls uh, on, on the right, uh, the patient gets scanned with the two arches, uh, not uh, over tightening one with the other, but then getting uh, separated uh, uh, thanks to the two cotton rolls. The, the element, uh, uh, the piece of information which is added on the on the uh, on the picture on the left is that say, suggesting that Navident is compatible for both cone beam technologies and also fan beam technologies, which is then uh, uh, makes uh, uh, you know uh, quite uh, uh, ideal for for Navident. Of course, if the office has its own cone beam at the office, then the whole process gets facilitated because uh, the whole process uh, is a, a seamless process process which is, uh, can start and finish in uh, in uh, just uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in in uh, in the day the plan the plan is uh, when we do have uh, uh, the dicom exported uh, uh, by the comb beam they then get get uploaded uh, into uh, into the software the plan is software the planning navident software and you see here the name of the patient, you see uh, the importing uh, of di DICOM uh, pictures and uh, the first and foremost action here is the registration of uh, uh, the fiducials, the city marker. That registration is carried out automatically by the software, but you do have a chance to verify and to see that the contours, uh, the, 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 the shade uh, contour of, uh, of the fiducials, um, are indeed uh, overlapping uh, the uh, images uh, 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 which have been retrieved by the DICOM files. If they are overmatching, uh, overlapping uh, and matching one with the other, everything is get uh, verified and you can uh, hit uh, the uh, key verified. And uh, by hitting the key, Navident the software project you with see these pictures, you project you with uh, the Panorex, and also the three quadrant underneath, which is uh, the um, actual uh, pictures, the coronal and the sagittal pictures. And in that case, the arch, um, uh, uh, the panoramic, uh, uh, the curve arch, it's uh, drawn uh, automatically by the software. So the software can draw automatically the panoramic arch. You can always review that arch, you can change it, you can cancel, you can. Uh, remove it and redraw it yourself, but that is carried out automatically by the software. What does the software doesn't do, uh, it doesn't draw the nerve, the nerve canal. That nerve canal drawing needs to be done and carried out by the surgeon. In a way which is, uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, is, you are familiar with, because it's, a, it's a, the same as uh, many other uh, CAD software uh, in, uh, in uh, performing uh, that task. So. Once the, um, the surgeon needs to plan an implant, the, the action gets to uh, uh, um, identifying the shape of the implant because you're going to be working uh, not uh, through a template uh, and therefore you don't need uh, to work through a master tube 
which has to be designed according to the specific brand, the, 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 the specific geometry. But you're going to be working freehand using dynamic surgery as a, as a, as a tool. You uh, need uh, only to understand uh, the shape of the implant. You see the cylinder, the taper, the conical, you know, the pointed uh, apex, uh, the flat apex. Uh, so you need to uh, identify the, uh, the shape of the implant you're going to be using. Then uh, you're going to place that shape on the panrex. Then using uh, the other three quadrants on the bottom to fine tune a correct position of, uh, of the implant. In the term of correct position, of course, not only positioning uh, the implants uh, on the volume of bone, but also uh, you know deciding the length and the width of, of the implant. In that case, because of a supposed extraction implant, you see that there is already a crown uh, on top of the implant, but you could have uh, used virtual teeth and uh, you could have uh, you know uh, put uh, some uh, virtual teeth as a virtual setup in order to uh, define uh, uh, the ideal uh, prosthesis and again uh, using uh, the uh, prosthetic driven approach uh, which is uh, uh, applicable in navigant uh, as much as on, uh, on other you know, in other software but that's, uh, that's uh, specific also uh, and common also to navigant while we we're talking and uh, we're talking about in uh, July 2016 um, the software doesn't have uh, yet uh, a module which is uh, an STL importing uh, and matching uh, with uh, the DICOM files. So that module will be available uh, this fall, 9, 2016. And therefore, right now, if you want to work on uh, a setup, you do have uh, two options. The first already we mentioned that, which is uh, to set up uh, 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 virtual teeth and uh, use the virtual teeth as a uh, uh, you know, set up, but you know, Richard did. I'm not, you know, taking into account uh, the, an the antagonism, uh, the antagonist arch, and therefore uh, the level of uh, accuracy of virtual teeth is uh, less than uh, a, a prosthesis which has been built uh, uh, through the articulator at the lab level. But you can use uh, uh, here, you can use uh, uh, the uh, barium sulfate, uh, uh, you know, uh, prosthesis, which is a, a replica of the prosthesis, which will be the end result uh, of the surgery. And this uh, barium uh, sulfate uh, prosthesis is going to be, uh, you know, placed on the patient's mouth while the patient gets scanned. And again, uh, occlusally, uh, the lab can drill uh, a cone, and it can drill a cylinder, which is going to be uh, pointing at the ideal uh, prosthetic axis uh, on uh, uh, on uh, each individual tooth. And therefore, uh, while uh, planning, the surgeon will have not only uh, the position uh, of the tooth, which is uh, again uh, uh, being put together uh, using the articulator and therefore taking into account uh, the antagonist arch, but also will identify through the black uh, cylinder the ideal uh, prosthetic arch uh, axis and therefore can uh, can therefore decide uh, to uh, position uh, the implant uh, in a way that uh, optimizes uh, the, um, uh, the surgical axis uh, with the prosthetic axis. So these are um, two approaches that can be used right now and can facilitate uh, the activity of the surgeon in placing uh, uh, the implant uh, using uh, uh, the prosthesis uh, uh, approach as, as a point of reference. So when we do change and move into placing the implants is where uh, uh, you, you see where the two uh, tags uh, take place you see the picture of the tags uh, in the middle left of, uh, of the uh, of the of this picture this slide you see the jaw tag and the drill tag and they are lit saying that uh, they are identified by the two cameras otherwise there would be blur pictures of jaw tag and drill tags they are lit therefore they are easily read by uh, the two cameras and uh, uh, while we are um, approaching uh, um, uh, the dynamic surgery we said that uh, we do calibrate the axis and we do calibrate uh, the drill tip once the calibration uh, has taken place and usually it takes a few seconds then is uh, uh, an important uh, uh, stage and phase which is what we call the accuracy check 
So by looking at the patient, the surgeon touches uh, uh, any anatomical uh, area which is uh, important uh, uh, and can be uh, you know, identified. In this case, the surgeon is touching uh, the tooth, the crown of, of the uh, extracted, or the extracted tooth um, before extraction. This um, is carried out to check the accuracy of the system and it provides the trust and the reassurance that the system is fully accurate and therefore the dynamic surgery can be carried out. And the question is, okay, what if I don't have any teeth in the patient mouth? Because I'm, talking with, I'm working with a total eventual patient. In that case, when we're working with a total eventual patient, the surgeon fixed the arm and the fixed plate using a pins or, uh, or screws. So you can always pinpoint with the drill this uh, one screw or one pin and you can uh, easily double check if uh, the touching, your touching, it's represented accurately by, uh, by the, the software, by the, the laptop. If that matches, uh, uh, the software matches what you are currently doing, that shows that the system uh, indeed uh, is, uh, is accurate and you can carry out uh, your dynamic surgery and uh, the way you, you carry out your dynamic surgery is very much the same as we mentioned before the crosshairs the vector the information of uh, the countdown when you get uh, lower than one millimeter from, uh, from the apex and that's that's something that we already seen there's a, another element uh, which uh, needs to be taken into account which is a proper patient dentist positioning. And here, Dr. Sartori is showing uh, quite effectively what is uh, that position. Because you can see that uh, his position on the rear, so he's not frontally, but uh, uh, on the back of the patient, it's, uh, it's sad. And uh, his elbows uh, is uh, uh, fixed and, uh, and, uh, and firm. And he's using two hands, not one hand. Um, he's a, a right hand surgeon. But he's still using a left hand to guide the drill into the position which is exactly pinpointed in the crosshair. That is a very important uh, approach, uh, specifically even more important on the third quadrant, where the surgeon hand right uh, hand uh, right-handed might have a challenge to perform uh, a drilling uh, in a way that uh, doesn't uh, hide away the tags, the drill tags and, and, the, and the jaw tag. In that case. What uh, Dr. Sertori is recommending is moving uh, the handpiece uh, from right to left and using your right hand to guide the handpiece and the drill, exactly pinpointing uh, the area where the surgery needs to take, uh, to take place. And this is another picture which is uh, coming from uh, Dr. Alvaro Ordones, who is uh, showing uh, how he deal with uh, the second quadrant, quadrant and, uh, and the position of the patient uh, is uh, quite essential here, again, to carry out properly uh, a dynamic surgery. These are, as we said, uh, the crosshair and the proper patient uh, surgeon positioning, uh, the two learning curves which need to be addressed in order to be properly using, uh, uh, to, in order to use properly the, uh, the navigant system. So, to summarize what we've been uh, uh, saying uh, and, uh, and dealing with uh, up to date, why, why implantologists choose Navident? I would suggest that we recommend there are three key elements here. Navident adds sight to tactical sense in flapless, flapless protocols. So in other words, you not only um, maintain uh, the tactical that comes uh, uh, from drilling uh, uh, you know, uh, through uh, the gum and through the bone of the patient, but you add up uh, the site because you can look at a screen, a laptop screen, and you can see exactly the position of your drill in the anatomy of the patient. That is a very powerful uh, uh, information which uh, provides, uh, a, you know, reassurance and, uh, and guidance uh, to to the surgeon. A second element, and is that uh, you don't need to use uh, uh, templates, and therefore you don't need a, a specific surgical kit. That is uh, in an, an element uh, of importance. Uh, we've seen this uh, through the survey that we carried out, which uh, we do not need uh, to spend extra money for templates and uh, to get uh, you know extra and specific uh, 
get surgery, a surgical kit. And the third element, and that element is applicable whenever the surgeons have in the, at the office a comb beam a CT, if you do have a comb beam CT, then you do have a chance to perform one day dentistry because you can get uh, the patient in, you can manufacture chair side uh, the nice stent, you can scan the patient, you can plan the patient, and then you can place the implants using uh, this dynamic uh, surgery approach. And this is very powerful because a one day dentistry allows to shorten up you know, the treatment uh, time frame at uh, a benefit uh, which is uh, applicable for both patients and also for the surgeon himself. So why patients choose Navident? They choose Navident because of uh, the one day treatment, because uh, the treatment costs uh, less, uh, the single treatment costs less vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the surgical, the guided, the static uh, guided surgical approach and of course the, this is uh, the, the most important element through a prosthetic driven surgery carried out using Navident the patient get a better prosthetic and therefore uh, can uh, uh, get out from uh, from uh, the office with a prosthetic which is not only uh, aesthetically effective but also functionally functionally effective that's that's a major takeaway uh, for for a patient and uh, yeah I'm just uh, uh, finishing up with uh, my contacts, it has been a, been a pleasure to present you with uh, the dynamic uh, guided surgery approach and uh, yeah, my email address and uh, my telephone number. So I'm looking forward to being in touch with all you guys. Thanks and have a good day. Bye bye.